Hi, I'm Linda Coffey, Livestock Specialist with the National Center for Appropriate Technology. Come along with me as we visit a farm and discuss components of animal health. What you are about to see is a flock that is being gathered so that the manager can assess every animal using the FAMACHA method to detect anemia. For those unfamiliar with the technique, see FAMACHA in a nutshell. We'll provide the link at the end of this video. Briefly, the FAMACHA system uses a card shown here and the fact that the barber pole worm causes anemia. The degree of infection with the barber pole worm can be determined by simply comparing the color of mucous membranes in the eye, as shown, with the card. The animal is scored as follows. One is the brightest, healthiest color. As the animal is impacted by blood-sucking worms, the membranes become paler and the score drops. So scores one and two are healthy and do not need to be dewormed while FAMACHA score 3 will sometimes need to be dewormed, depending on other factors. And FAMACHA score 4, which is a paler pink, and 5, which is white, are in dire need of help and must be dewormed to save the life of the animal. By only treating those that need it, we preserve dewormers and avoid dewormer resistance. In this video, you will see the whole flock resting and then on the move. Dr. Joan Burke, researcher at the Dale Bumper Small Farms Center in Boonville, Arkansas, will identify two animals that need immediate help. She will talk through the assessment process, including the five-point check, and describe the treatment and supportive care needed. Mr. Darren Bigner assists with the treatment. Unfortunately, I don't have a FAMACHA card. So she's but very pale. She's really white. You don't need a FAMACHA card for that. Wow. Okay. So Good she's year. wormy. Got her for a second. How's yep. her? I got her. Jaw. Uh, I do not feel any bottle jaw here. No bottle jaw. No. Her ears are cold. Um, you might you want to look at her vulva, the color of her vulva. That's another way. I don't know if you can see it or not. A little bit dirty behind. Yeah, very pale. Yeah. Body condition? Um, body condition is about a two, which is not great. For going into fall breeding, you really want her to be three, three and a half. She's about a two, which you can't really see with the the hair but you can see how she's sunk in here so she doesn't have a full belly so anytime they're kind of sunk in here it means they haven't really been eating too much her um, poop was loose yeah, and this is the one that was lagging behind um, she wasn't feeling very good she didn't come up with the others she decided to lay down before she could get up with the others in a case like this I would triple deworm and use a copper oxide wire bolus because you know if her worms are resistant to one of those by using four different treatments, you know that they're probably going to knock it back to probably 99%. So what would you deworm with? So I would do levamisole um, and something like uh, Valvazin. Valvazin is stronger than Safeguard. Um, it's an albendazole. Mm -hmm. And then I would use either Cydactin or Ivermectin plus the copper oxide. So Joan, if you deworm with effective dewormers, how quickly could this sheep recover from the parasitism? She should be back on her feet in about a week or so. Yeah, so. since you have another one that doesn't feel well, put the two of them together, put them on some good, really high quality hay and uh, a little 16% you know, protein. Right, and the extra protein will help them recover.
got a nice curved tip with a ball end, so it's not going to hurt the mouth of the animal. It's got the curve that goes on over the back of the tongue, which is exactly where you want to deliver the dose. Right. Ah, yeah, because if I hold her against yeah. my leg and see she wants to bite, it's okay. Being sure she swallows. You can get the proper dosage from wormx.info. There's a chart for sheep and a chart for goats. It's really important to know what your animal weighs. Be careful not to underdose. And with Levamisol, you don't want to overdose because uh, Neurological uh, toxicities that yes. occur. Right. Yes. Okay. So she's going to be put where she gets supportive care. Okay. Now, what about giving her a shot of iron? Be complex. There's not enough research done. It can't hurt to put her on. I have it. So yeah. I don't mind B vitamins it. will stimulate her appetite. Mm -hmm. um, the iron is not going to hurt her. So, right. but there's if just she's not a enough research. Anemic, then yeah. You could yeah. Help. Okay. We just don't know. It's not going to hurt. Right. So this is just to be complex here, and it's about, about two cc's for her size, what I get. And I usually go in behind the front leg. You never want to put an injection in the high dollar muscles because there will be a scar, and the scar tissue will have to be trimmed away, so we don't want that. And then this is just iron. CC's per that. Normally a dorper would be much more feisty than this, so you know she's not feeling very well. So yeah. I'm barely holding on to her. Yeah. I believe Darren said she was dewormed a month ago, which indicates either very heavy worm load on pasture or uh, resistance to the dewormer. This treatment is effective. She'll be feeling much better next week. So this one has a black nose, so you can't really tell by looking right at her if she's anemic or not. That's why, um, again, we don't have a Fomagic card, but you don't need a Fomagic card here. It's going to be a Fomagic 5 um, because it's white. You see that? Yeah. And then you can also look at the gums. So have very pale gums, even with a black pigment. And this one I noticed was a little bit worse off because she didn't even make it around the bend here. Um, she stopped for a drink of water when she got up, which kind of suggests to me she's been laying there for a long time. And she didn't feel like getting up. Feeling too good. Delivering the dewormer over the back of the tongue. Being careful she swallows. Again, dosage charts on wormx.info. There's one for sheep, one for goats. And again, considering the body condition of the animal. So when, when we consider the five point check, um, we consider um, is the nose clear? In her case, her nose is clear. Um, she's pale, yes. Condition is uh, a bit thin, so again, she's about a body condition score of two. I'd rather have her be about a three or three and a half at breeding time. Um, also, look, uh, that's another one of our five point checks to see if they're messy or daggy. Which she's, she's dirty on her legs and dirty on her hip, yeah, as if she's been laying down. She's very weak. How about a jaw? Not see any bottle jaw here, but she is um, she's one of those sheep. She, she's trying to die. Um, and on these, I, I try to 
try to stimulate them, kind of make them mad a little bit, and that seems to kind of make them want to live. Get their fighting. Yeah, fighting so I, I tend to, I don't know, she, she may be too weak to stand up, but, but I, I try to just kind of call my, I don't know, sheep whispering, pounding type right, weak. Right, right. And I, it, it's worked in the past. And she's going to she's going to be going inside. Um, Darren is sh giving her a shot of B vitamins and of iron. She's going to be getting good hay and some 16% protein feed, just a little bit to boost her immune system and get her some nutrition to help her fight this off. Again, this one was dewormed about a month ago.